and boom goes the dynamite. Welcome to the How to Play video for Beyond Humanity Colonies, a hybrid semi-cooperative tabletop board game for 2-5 players. This is a game about building and expanding a human colony on an alien planet. Our game is an exciting fusion of advanced board game design, inventive electronic modules, and a companion app. By integrating RFID technology into our game and intelligent cards, we have made combining the physical elements and the software elements nearly effortless. When in play, our module buildings emit light and connect wirelessly to the app, which shows the state of your colony and its citizens. In Beyond Humanity Colonies, the players assume the role of manager characters who control a new colony on an alien planet. Through building new modules, introducing new laws, and creating thoughtful strategies, they try to balance the citizens' mood, resource capital, bank account balance, as well as many other factors, like the planet's condition or the aggressive actions from factions back on Mother Earth. For each player, there are two goals. First, the collective goal with the other players, prevent the colony from failing, because if that happens, everyone loses. Secondly, as an individual goal, collect the most victory points. Even though players may lose together in the face of the many obstacles ahead of them, only one player will be the winner in the end. In the box you will find building modules with electronics. Among them is the main module, the ARC. Connectors to join new modules to the colony's net. Module tiles with the ARC tile among them. Manager or character sets. Their boards, tokens, directives, and the assistance assigned to them. Resource and currencies used in the game like decree cards, credits, Terran goods, and political advantage tokens. Hidden goals card deck. Artifacts card deck. Governor's token. Base amount of votes tile. The instruction manual. To play the game, you will need a device with our app installed on it. The Beyond Humanity Colonies companion app is compatible with almost all Android and iOS based smartphones and tablets. During a Beyond Humanity Colonies game, the players will try to expand their colony in hopes of becoming self-sufficient. The players will add new module buildings that will report their state through different flashing LED sequences. New citizens will immigrate to the colony as conditions become more prosperous. There will be changes in the production and consumption of resources like power, life support, gas, and liquids. The remaining stock balance will change. There will also be changes in the citizens' mood and the colony's technical state. But even though the players will need to consider all of those variables, the game takes the burden of calculation off of the player's shoulders. The companion app runs all of the complicated math that must be calculated for the players, and the results will be shown on the app screen. This allows the game to be deep and nuanced while still staying easy to play. The colony has many variable stats, such as the happiness and security of its citizens. Players can modify this factor by playing the appropriate decree cards or by building modules that change the state of the colony. The security status is also modified by a fair ratio of sec force versus other citizen groups. A low happiness or low security status will result in social unrest, riots, and even losing the game prematurely. The colony's technical state. Players can take care of this factor by building an appropriate amount of modules, by keeping a fair ratio of colonists versus other citizen groups, or by introducing decrees. A low technical status can result in decompression of the colony or certain modules. It can cause fires, floods, or other dangerous situations, and even a catastrophe, which will severely damage modules and send them back into an automatic construction period. The population of citizens, their distribution among social groups, and migration factors. Citizens will more likely come to a happy, friendly colony. Players should remember to build modules that attract certain citizen groups when their numbers are needed to increase. The production and consumption of resources like power, life support, liquids, and gas. Different modules can produce or consume these resources. Lacking any of them can be fixed by import but this will drain the colony's remaining stock supply much faster. The colony has its own bank. 
Its balance depends on several conditions that players create in the colony, such as the presence of modules that produce and consume stock, the number of citizens, the building queue, and decree cards that the players introduce. Be careful. Allowing the balance to repeatedly fall below zero will make you lose the game. So, players should work to expand their colony, ensuring all citizens have a place to live and work, but also to relax and improve their moods. But at the same time, players should keep track of the previously mentioned variables, because a low index can cause many problems, and even lead to the fall of the colony, and as a result, losing the game. There are many more dependencies in this network, and to know them, we urge you to read the manual. On a prepared table, you will mark out several zones. Colonization site for modules and tiles. Save some space on the table for the expansion of both the module network and the module tiles. A spare element zone. There should be a place for the other game elements such as the module tiles waiting to be built, artifacts deck, decree deck, spare currency tokens for credits, terran goods, and political advantage, module connectors, and assistant cards. We suggest to place the base votes token in this area as well. Rules of amounts for these elements according to the number of players are in the rulebook. Player zones. Inside each of them, every player should have their manager board with their starting resources on it, player's token, which also is his RFID action registration key, their chosen hidden goals, starting decree cards, and their special decree, the private directive. On the table, there should also be some space for the module minis ready to connect to the colony. To begin the game, players turn on the ARC module and the application in any order. The player must then choose the planet or difficulty level they wish to play on. Players should get familiar with the types of planets and the associated difficulty level. After choosing a planet and confirming the choice, the application will connect to the ARC module and ask for the registration of players. Each player should then register his manager by placing the character token above the top of the ARC module where the RFID antenna is embedded. After registering all playing managers, players will click and confirm the start button and begin the first round of the game. Be careful. In the first round, players skip the first and second phase, the app and the upkeep, and go straight into the action phase. The Beyond Humanity Colonies game consists of a maximum 30 rounds, or months, of colony life that are divided into several phases. We are going to skip some rounds to better illustrate the gameplay. The first phase in every round is clicking the Next button on the application and reviewing the provided information from the app. The second phase is an upkeep phase. This is where players will pay upkeep for elements that require it. The third phase is the action phase. Each player has two or three actions every turn. The fourth phase is construction. Connect the modules that were successfully voted this round to the colony's network. In the fifth and last phase, each player can choose one decree card, the contents of they would like to introduce to the game. After completing all phases, players move on to the next round. Now. Let's get into the details. Phase 1. Next round. The governor clicks and confirms the next button. This makes the application count and prepare all statuses for the new round. If any of the special states have occurred, like overcrowding, the app will then inform the players about it. The next screen players see is this month's occurrence and the information on which decree cards from the last round were successfully voted in. In this phase, players should also execute any player-based content of successful decrees and move all to the discard pile. After clicking the close button, the app will display the info screen of a new month. Phase 2. Upkeep. If any of the players has a module that didn't collect enough votes to join the colony last month, or has hired an assistant, 
they should then pay upkeep for those elements. Every extension of a module vote to the next turn costs a player one credit, and every hired assistant costs one Terran good. If you are unable to pay your upkeep, that element is returned to the bank, and all the goods collected on them are lost and also put back in the bank. Phase 3. Actions In Beyond Humanity Colonies, players can take three kinds of actions. The first kind is expanding the colony via a module building vote. The second is using action sockets of already built modules. And the third action available is hiring an assistant. As an expansion of the colony, each player can use their action and give one vote on a module that is in the voting process, either theirs or another player's. Or they can start voting on any new module from the bank. Players use decree cards from their own hands as votes, face down without executing the content. However, if players want to use the action socket of an already built module, they'll place their token on the action socket of any built module tile and execute the corresponding action. The last action option is hiring an assistant. To do that, the player will take an unhired assistant card from the bank, put it next to their board, and pay a fee of one Terran good. An assistant hired in this way and paid in the next upkeep phase will give its owner an earlier assistant action phase and access to an action socket on its card. Let's go through an example. Each player has two or three actions per turn, depending on if they have hired an assistant. Actions are taken in a specific order. In the beginning, players who have hired assistants take their assistant action phase. They begin with the governor as a first player and they take actions one by one in a clockwise order. In this example, player one is the governor. He has the governor's token and he begins the action in this round. Players one and three have both hired and paid the upkeep for their assistants, so they are allowed to take an assistant action. Player one decides to take the action socket of an industrial dome, so he receives two credits from the bank. Next, player 3 takes his action. He decides to take an action socket on the arc module tile and take two decree cards from the bank, because he wants to have votes to finish his module. After their zero actions, players remove their tokens and all players take their first actions. They will all take one action, beginning with the governor, one at a time, in clockwise order. Player 1 decides to take the Terran Goods action socket on the arc tile to be able to pay for his assistant in the next upkeep phase. Player 2 adds his vote to Player 3's voting because he considers this module necessary. Player 3 also adds a vote on his module. Player 4 goes to an action socket on the arc tile and draws two decree cards from the bank. After completing their first actions, players remove their tokens and take their second actions this time in reverse order, counterclockwise, from the last player to the governor. Player 4 takes a Terran Good action socket on an arc tile and draws one Terran Good from the bank. Player 3 would also need a Terran Good, but this action socket is already taken. He decides to raise his support among colony citizens, so he places his token above the arc module and after confirming on the app, takes a campaign action socket on the arc tile. Player 2 goes to the decree action socket on the arc tile and draws two decree cards. Player 1 would also need decree cards. He could go to that action socket because it's the only action socket that cannot be blocked, but instead he decides to add one last vote to Player 3's module voting. All of the players have used all of their available actions, so they remove their tokens and go to the next phase. Phase 4. Construction If in a given round some modules proposed by the players have collected the required number of votes, you can then connect it into the network. To do this, we take the associated tile and attach it to the chain of tiles of built modules, and the votes collected on this module are put into the discard pile. We then take the module mini and attach it to the network of the colony modules. The module, after reporting in the app, will ask you to confirm which player introduced it. The player should then register through the NFC by placing his character token on top of the ARC module. 
The introduction of the module is assigned to the player because it gives the player a slight increase in support from the citizens and a small point bonus in the end. However, it is not of such a high value that it would be worthwhile blocking this initiative. If there is more than one module to be connected to the network in this route, they are registered one after another, each time confirming the owner's identity. Modules that have not collected enough votes will be able to be carried over and transferred to the next round after paying one credit in the upkeep phase. It is worth mentioning that there is a number of votes that are needed to build individual modules. Each module to enter the game must collect the number of votes, which is the sum of the base vote card's quantity, as seen on the green token, and the additional number of votes needed by the specific module. For example, the atmospheric synthesizer with four players must collect four plus zero, or four votes. Or the industrial dome with three players must collect three plus three, or six votes, to enter the game. Phase five, decrees. At the end of each round, each player may propose one decree, the content of which they would like to introduce to the game. To do this, each player selects or passes one decree card from his hand and puts it face down in front of him. To do this, each player may select one decree card from their hand and put it face down in front of themselves. Once all players have decided whether they wish to propose a decree and which card they want to play, then all players reveal their chosen cards simultaneously. The reasonableness of introducing individual decrees can be discussed, but whether the player enters his decree or not can only be decided by the player themselves. If for some reason the player cannot submit the decree because they forgot about the fee or cannot afford it or the decree is being blocked by some other directive, they may withdraw it, but they may not put another decree in its place. The decrees that players enter must be paid for. The cost appears in the lower left corner of the decree card. If there is nothing in this place, it means that that decree card is free. After paying the fee, players register their decree cards in the game using RFID, applying them to the top of the arc module, each time confirming the owner with their token, the same as during the construction phase. Registered decrees will be put to a vote by the citizens of the colony and will have a chance to enter the game depending on the support that the player has collected. Green decrees have a better chance of being considered. Red ones will have a harder time getting passed. The likelihood of a decree being passed is increased by campaign actions and the general support the player has from the citizens. Each decree that enters the game has its own unique impact on the colony. These can affect the state of the colony, such as happiness, safety, technical condition, and introduces modifications described in its content. Each decree is different, and it depends on the player's choice to see what new laws will appear in the colony. Directives are unique cards assigned to each manager. These are special activities similar to decrees. They are disposable, so after using them, the players put them in the box and are not voted. They enter the game automatically. The results of voting, confirmation and registration of decrees and directives are displayed at the beginning of each new round. After registering all decrees, players will move to the next round. It starts with the next button, then the upkeep phase, assistant actions, first actions, second actions, module construction, and player decrees. If the players manage to survive all 30 rounds, or the colony has built on 15 modules, or the population has swelled to 15,000 citizens, the players win. Special Actions from Action Sockets Among the action icons located on the various tiles, the action of expeditions and research require additional explanation which should help the players obtain highly desirable artifacts. Acquiring artifacts is the main goal of some of the managers. 
It may be required to accomplish hidden goals, but it is mainly a source of resources and victory points for players. To get an artifact, the player must do two things in the proper order. First, start and complete an expedition, which means finding an artifact on the planet. And secondly, after finding it, carry out research on it. In order to carry out an expedition of an artifact, the player must dedicate two actions of the action socket with the compass symbol, each time filling out one entire expedition field on the artifact card from their own resources. These fields are on the back of the card next to the compass icon. If the player does not have any artifact cards in the expedition slot, by doing this action they get one artifact card from the bank. They put it into the expedition slot and fill one of the two fields. However, if there is already a card with one field filled in, the player will use this action to fill the second, also from their own resources. Then discard all resources from both fields to the bank. Then, in secret from the other players, they may read the contents of the card and put it face down in the research slot. The player is not able to execute directions from this artifact card yet. The player must now research the found artifact. To do this, they must spend two actions on an action socket with the beaker symbol, each time filling in one field entirely on the research icons, just like they had done with the expedition. After completing the last field, the player discards the resources accumulated there back to the bank, informs everyone about the contents of the card, executes the commands on it, and places it in their player zone as a trophy. The artifact, once fully researched, will give the player the number of victory points visible on it at the end of the game. Each player can have only one artifact at any time in the expedition slot and one at any time in the research slot. If the player fills the entire expedition section and the research slot is still busy, then the artifact card lays in wait for the research slot to be released. Another type of action that has special rules is the campaign. The action socket with the campaign icon allows the player to register his token through RFID. After each campaign, the citizens will be more and more favorable to the proposed decrees by this player. And this manager will have an increased chance of obtaining the title of Colony President when counting the points at the end of the game. There are many other factors such as building new modules and positive green decrees that also have an impact on the citizens' support. During the game, there are several special condition states that may occur. These are the reactions of citizens and the situations occurring due to the negligence by the players of any colony parameters. In each of these cases, the app will display the appropriate screen and a hint as to how to remedy the situation. If the players do not correct a low level of happiness or security for the citizens, the citizens will go out into the corridors and begin to riot. If these riots persist for three consecutive months, the colony will be plunged into total chaos and all of the players will lose the game. If the players allow the technical status of the colony to significantly deteriorate, a catastrophe will occur. This means that fires will start to break out in the modules, there may be a leakage or other disaster, and the affected modules will be destroyed and put into an automatic rebuild state, which will further decrease the colony stock. If players allow a situation to continue where the colony is unattractive, dangerous, unhappy, or in a poor technical condition, it may become depopulated. If this happens, all the players will lose. If the players drive the colony into debt, they will force the colony to take a resupply from Mother Earth, a Terran Dependence. If a third Terran Dependence is taken, the colony falls into the possession of Earthlings and will never be independent. This causes all players to lose. So it is important to take care of all the aspects of colony life, because once the economy or social moods are shaken up, it can be difficult to regain control. Despite all of the odds and problems, if the players manage to finish 30 rounds without losing, or build 15 modules, or bring more than 15,000 citizens to the colony, they will meet the winning conditions and finish the game successfully. When the game finishes, the app will inform the players that the colony has gained independence, and they will announce who has won the first democratic election and become colony president. Players should then sum up their victory points displayed on the screen and the victory points accumulated on the table during the game and compare them among themselves. 
Whoever has won the most wins the game. Congratulations, managers. Be sure to check out our Board Game Geek game page to dive deep into more information. Please add us to your wish list and subscribe to us if you are already excited by Beyond Humanity Colonies. Thank you.